So we gotta figure out what we want to do, right? Um, so I am thinking that, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with some of these things, right? So let's group up spellcasters. So we got wizard, we got druids, because I, I do like having the distinction between uh, arcane magic, I like the uh, godlike magic, and I like the nature as magic as well, right? And then something that's often missing, the mentalist, the psionics, and having that be a sort of magic as well, right? Definitely kind of the same system. And then we got the warrior, we got the rogue, uh, we got the monk who's physical, and we got the uh, paladin who's physical, but sort of in the middle, right? Because he's kind of borrowing from the cleric uh, of sorts. Um, so what other classes could we we need? Let's see. Oh, yeah, we've completely forgotten the ranger, but there's a reason for the ranger, right? Well... I guess I could put it in as a sort of more of a survivalist thing. Because having a bow and arrow in, in this system is not going to be easy. Um, it's going to be more tactical how you use it. Because most fights is going to be indoors. Where it's going to be really difficult <clears throat> to get to, to hit people in massed fighting. Quick movements, uh, short ranges and stuff like that. So everyone is basically going to be like, yeah, you can use a bow at, at ranges, and once you get in close combat, well, you're fucked unless you switch to close combat, right? That's going to be the idea behind all of this. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking uh, for doing um, to get out there. So yeah, let's, let's, let's drop in that ranger anyways, right? Ranger one. There we go. So now we got a Ranger two. Ah, oh. and of course now I got a sneeze. Typical. Um. So we got those four classes. Those four classes. We got the Paladin. Um. So let's see. We got melee oriented. We got more thieving. We got uh, close combat. We got ranged combat and animals. Um. We've got Paladin, sort of a hybrid thing. Uh, because I'm not going to go the route and make the Ranger a magic user. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give them more focused on survival. And um, so let's write that on him, right? Survival. Uh, Any tracking uh, archery. Right, uh, no magic because that's not my idea of a ranger. A ranger does not cast spells, he's not part druid or anything the way I look at it. Um, oh, yeah, we totally forgot the uh, barbarian, right? So, since we're doing the classes, well, I guess we should do the barbarian. I mean, he's a stable of most games, right. So I'm guessing barbarian be okay. Um, so in my own game world, I have something called a, a Faradin. And what he is, he's basically what the paladin is to the cleric, he is to the wizard, right? Um, so that means that he has his I could when we're doing this I could do that with the druid too um, I could be interesting I could definitely be interesting and then figure out something for the mentalist too um so, if any of you have read the uh, books, um, oh, damn it, crashed, stupid app. Um, so, if any of you have read the uh, uh, Wheel of Time series, 
where they bind a water to them and stuff like that. Sort of that way, um, like this guy is bound to him and the paladin is more bound to the cleric um, and stuff like that. Um, so that's the question, right? Should they be bound directly to one person or as a stand traditional paladin to the god, right? And I'm actually, I like the codependence part of it for a player. Of course, um, being a paladin accounts you to a higher power, right? So there's that point. point. But if you're just to a higher magical power, what, what, what does that even mean, right? Like, what, 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 <laughs> what would that even do? Uh, and of that, I'm not sure if that's the best way to go. But again, this is really good for a player in a role-playing system. This is really good for players in a LARP, right? Live-action role-playing. And... But for a table thing where there's a limited amount of other players, that would either require someone else be playing these classes too. And that's probably not as good, right? So we need to figure out what is the best thing to do. And that I don't know. I mean, I do like the... Oh yeah, a wizard creates a ferritin, a cleric creates a paladin, and a druid creates a ranger, right? Sort of a bonded disciple thing. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking let's go with this. Let's go with the bonded disciple. Basically. So, magic's back on board for the ranger. Um, so, what should we do for the last class? What should be a good mentalist name, right? Um, what would be a good name for that? Like, uh, yeah. What would be a good name? <laughs> I actually don't know. Um, so, let's do mentalist, right? So... Uh, so I think warrior, nah. So if we start by doing this, right, and we maybe change ranger into a uh, rangadin or something, I don't know. In and you need to be there, not there. Um, so that would be like rank at in ranger thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to think about that, right? So paladin, faradin. Um, yeah. Um, mint adin. Nah. Um, yeah, what would be a good name for, like, someone who is very strong, mental, uh, can tune their own bodies and stuff like that? Oh, that's a good question. Like, really good question. Um, I wonder if I could Google it or something. Um, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Boom, boom, boom. What could work, right? What could work? Yeah, that is indeed, indeed a most worthy question. Um, so Paladin doesn't have anything in common, so we don't have to keep the mentalist name. Um, so what's a good mental power thing? I, I just want something that sounds like, oh, this is a badass. <sighs> hmm. 
Yeah, what would be a good thing? Hmm. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Hmm. Kind of lost. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually don't know what to put in. Uh, hmm. Let me see. I'll make a quick Google thing and then I'll be back. Okay, so that did not make me wiser because most of it is like clairvoyant, augurs, and stuff like that. So I'm thinking let's come up with something else instead of going in the mental thing. Um, or, <laughs> can't believe I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> yes. Let's see if this book has anything interesting to say about this, right? So, let's see. Complete psionics. Oh man, this has been a while since I've been looking at this book. I remember getting it and oh man, this was cool. Always liked Sonics. Um, I've been really, really passionate about the uh, books by. Uh, I can't remember, of course, what they're called. Um, uh, the Golden Torque books and stuff. Um, they were amazing. Um, really like that. Really want to make a role playing game based on it, too. Um, let's see if there's any class names or anything. So, assists. Mm -hmm. That's just wild powers, power checks. Um, that's just a different thing. Psychokinesis. So these are all the different powers um, you could do in second edition. Dimensional door, time space anchor, time shift, teleport trigger. So there's definitely a lot of inspiration to be had from this, that's for sure. <laughs> that's hilarious, though. Is that a little garden gnome? <laughs> Mental barrier. But there are so many powers in this one. Like, that's... Sarah's campaign, general guidelines. So, doesn't really... There really seem to be any titles or anything. Oh yeah, the brain bowl. I remember that one. That was an interesting monster. Cerebral parasite. Intellect devourer. Yeah. Um Thought Eater, Sue Monster. Eh. Vagabond. Nope. Nothing. So, didn't really have much to help us. 
at least no inspiration to get. Um, so let's see, what could we call something? Um, I do have the other one, right? Uh, so, in my standard universe, the paladin is called the uh, Thoradin, and then, uh, or actually, I believe it's Faradin, uh, and then Thoradin is the wizard one. But eh, who cares about this, right? Um, so, I can take this and put that on the mentalists so we keep the paladin and ranger because people know them and then i have these two because they may be more bonded directly so these two bonds directly while these two more bonds like um, more yeah i kind of like that i kind of like that idea right so paladin is just paladin ranger is just ranger because they are devoted one to the gods one to nature but still they form a, a loose bond with a cleric and a druid right but whereas the mentalists directly influences what powers this guy like they, they are in, in a sort of symbiosis, right? And the same with the wizard. He uses spells, infuses that into that guy, binding them together too. So this is a very hard bond, and the same thing with this one. Whereas these two are not that hard bound together. Um, yeah, I kind of like that idea. Uh, so a Thoradin and a Faradin. Yeah, I like that. Sounds good. Sounds really cool, actually. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's keep working with that, right? And that leaves us with uh, lots of classes, that's for sure. Um, so the big question is, should I start with all of them? Like, I could go all out and say, well, these three are not coming out until later. <laughs> I can already be thinking, oh yeah, expansions, right? Boom, then we can remove those. Ooh, that could be interesting. Um, so, but that's like future things, thinking, yeah, not, not really that important. Mm. Ah, sweet coffee. So, we got lots of classes. We got them uh, working together. So let's see, um, uh, let's call it mentalists. Uh, bound. Uh, druid bound. Druid bound, there we go. Paladin, cleric bound. And wizard bound. So the idea behind all of these is they, they draw their power from the same system. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's work with this. I think this could be really interesting. So we got all the levels there. So these are kind of the classes you pick from at the first level. Uh, and then of course we need to make level two versions of them, etc., etc., etc. Um Yay, write them cards. Yes, toolbox. I will write them cards. How are you doing today, good sir? And welcome uh, to hang out. Been a while. I uh, hope you're doing good, man. Um So yeah, this is the the classes I am currently thinking about having. Uh, doing good for 12.18 local. Oh, PM. 12.18 <laughs> 12, PM. Let's see. It's not AM, so PM. So that's just afternoon. Hey, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, just need more coffee and lunch, I guess. So, yeah, here it's like, what, 8.20? Uh, oh, in the morning. Ah, then it's AM. If it's 12, 18 a.m., or, well, it's uh, zero, zero. <laughs> yeah, it's a.m. 
then it's late. Then you definitely need more coffee or, well, considering it's weekend, uh, I'd say uh, get some liquor. <laughs> that might help you. I do have coffee myself, uh, but here it's like, yeah, early morning. So just decided to try and get some creative stuff done. So, yeah. Why are you up this late, man? Mm. Ah, coffee. So anyways, the idea here is having lots of classes, lots of flexibility. We're going to stream stuff. Nice. What are you uh, working on uh, on it? Yeah, on, on it. <laughs> what parts are you working on? Um, so yeah, we've got classes. I don't think we should define yet all the special things they get right now. Overlays and audio settings. Yeah, oh, that can be so much work um if you let it like i hate it when when i go nuts with it and it's like oh it's gotta be perfect and then i don't stream for a month because it's not perfect whereas people don't care if it's perfect oh i hate falling into that trap <laughs> and i do it all the time uh unfortunately hate room noise yeah sometimes you just gotta do it or get another microphone um well, I'm actually on my mobile phone. This this is my mobile phone, and um, I went out and bought a directional microphone for it. And if even if I turn on the music in the background, you can barely hear it because the microphone is so short. Um, it's a, a Rode Video Mic Me. Really, really good, actually. Um, I mean, it's not the best necessarily uh, and being here it sounds almost the same as my um, inbuilt samsung microphone but with the wind muffler on or the dead cat as people call it um it's amazing it's like cutting out all the background noise i can blow over it and stuff like that it's really really good so this is basically my mobile phone hanging above my table in a like holding arm uh, and then having that little microphone uh, looking at me. So I'm not even tethered to it with a uh, clip-on microphone or anything. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I like uh, when it works out. <laughs> I have one sitting around, might give it a try. I'd say, again, use it for if you've got really loud room noises. I'd get a, a directional microphone. Uh, like one of the Rode ones. Um, I have one of the Rode Video Mic Pros as well that I could technically hook up to streaming and that would also cut out a lot of the sound. It's just not sounding that deep. Um, but yeah, the, quest, uh, the solution I've found to my, my sound setup is getting the microphone really close uh, and then lowering the, the boost and stuff. That cuts out of most of the room sound. Uh, problem is either you're going to have like, uh, your face and then you're going to have the microphone like halfway covering your face, which most people have, or as I have done recently, um, since I returned to streaming, I have my, uh, webcam, uh, or webcam looking at my face more sideways. And then I actually have the microphone just, uh, outside over here, like pointing straight at my face, but you can, can't see my fingers until they come in here. But it's still like right there in front of my face. And that has improved my sound over by my streaming machine immensely. And I really mean immensely. It's really good now. Uh, but yeah, it takes a, a lot of work figuring out. And I had to put it on a, um, uh, what I call it. Uh, I made a, took, one, took a lamp, um, like a lamp holder like this, and converted it into. Uh, <laughs> into uh, uh, holding the microphone instead. So that was pretty uh, interesting. Wow, my phone is getting hot, hot, hot. That's for sure. So anyways, that was the classes, right? So we need to look at backgrounds next. Uh, let's get you over there. So let's see, we got Trade of family, noble family, royal family, dramatic family. You're definitely not part of the rich part. Thief family. Let's see your workers. 
uh, orphan, I guess you will belong there, Matthew family, clergy family, merchant family, craftsman family, yep. so you're more that kind. Yeah, I guess I could drop you guys in there. And background modifiers and gods and stuff, which I still need to figure out as well. Um, so the idea is, yeah, different backgrounds. So when you create your character, the create character creation is going on through cards, right? To make it easy for people to uh, choose. You don't have to read an entire book. Basically, like, choose one card out of these, and then this will tell, or uh, another card might tell you where to go next, and then choose one card out of these, and so on and so forth. So the thing is, you choose your background, right? Like, what sounds like my background? So do I want to come from like a noble family that might give me tiles and stuff, but then I can buy and I will list like, oh yeah, you get a title, inherited title at some point, you get uh, maybe some uh, rich background as well uh, and so on and so forth. And then you can buy on modifiers, which will either remove something, add something or even uh, do other things, right? So you can like, big, uh, let's see, noble family, you will stand to inherit uh, things or um, you might even be lost sons and, or way down the food chain, right? But you can buy on things like you uh, got a title already, right? You can buy on, but I'm poor. So you have a noble name, but you're poor, certainly. Or you can buy on extra riches, or if you're another type of family, you can be, be rich. You can be hunted for some reason. You got an inheritance that is upcoming. You already inherited it, which is more expensive than the other one. You've been disowned. Uh, title inheritance and, and all these kind of things. So that's the, that's the idea behind this is to have the option to create actually whatever you want. And also, like, let's say you come from a, a farmer family, right? So a farmer is working hard all day long. And the thought about this is, well, your background actually gives you a chance to choose between strong or sturdy. So you can either have, like, higher strength or higher constitution. But you have to choose. And again, all these kind of choices helps you define your character as well. Um, so those are the kind of things um, we should look at now, right? Uh, and, and also, because of the role-playing part, and I really want to focus on role-playing, is that saying you grew up in a soldier family, that adds a lot of potential story for you. Just from that, those words, right? Just having soldier family. And then if you put on poor, hey, that's not a word that helps you define your story and tell that story, right? And that is the entire idea behind the system, is it's a series of words that helps you write your story. I actually think that's going to be uh, my punchline. Uh, let's write that down. Series of words that help you write and tell your story. Um, so that's the that's the general idea. So let's uh, let's work with this, right? <clears throat> so we got the royal family. Uh, so yeah, the question is, we should not immediately make you super powerful by being royal family, right? That just means, oh yeah, I'm part of the family. I'm not in line for the throne. But you could buy it cheaper, I guess. But that's gonna, uh, then we're gonna have points, yeah. But that's maybe not that bad, actually, having a few points, right? Because let's see, uh, because being in having a title or being in line to a throne, that's different. That's very different. 
Um, so let's see here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Uh, background modifier. Uh, what's it called? Um, in line to the throne. Is, does that have another word? Uh, succession, I think. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, something like that. Um, but let's just say. Uh, um, I guess I could make it like third. Um, third, second, and first inheritance to the throne. Prince slash princess. Aha. Uh -huh. That could work. But that still doesn't define the rank, right? Um, so either I make it prince slash princess one, two, three, uh, like your first, second, and third in line of succession, um, or I could just make it line of succession, then you can still define your own story. Yeah. Hmm. I think that would work, actually. So let's see here. Um, so we got background modifier, and then we put on uh, uh, boop, boop, boop. hey, wait a minute. If we just do line of succession, right, then that could technically apply to all the families, but being first in line for this one is huge, right? That's basically a kingdom. This, the traitor family, um, that is potentially something huge too. A noble family can potentially be sort of big, but definitely not as big as a royal family, and it can also be a lot worse. Um, so I'm guessing uh, royals. Oh yeah, because if you make it royal succession, you can buy it not only for this, but for any one of these. So let's make it royal succession. Royal. I have no idea how to spell this, so it will <laughs> be spelled yet at some other point. So if you make that the royal succession one, right? And that means there's gotta be others. So let's see, uh, background, and the idea is with these background modifiers you can actually buy them in the game, during the game as well. So. two. So that's a second in line, and then let's see. Background. Can't wait to actually make this on uh, real cars. Hey, Jeff Hunter! My man, how are you doing? Hope you're doing good this morning. Modifier. Um, Royal Succession. Three. So then we have ability to buy these, right? So costs where this one might cost, uh, let's say, royal succession one if you're a royal family. Um, I'm actually doing quite okay these days. Well, a lot quite okay is like doing a hell of a lot better than normal um, so yeah I'm doing quite okay getting a few streams in and stuff like that really want to go back to Pathfinder though but yeah haven't been finding the energy so let's see uh, one point uh, one point um, uh, I think this one is gonna be like three points or something um, Let's work with that for now. 
Uh, should we just do it two points? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe two points. I want to keep the math low, so uh, roll association one. Let's do. It's got to be expensive. Four points. So that's going to require a lot of negatives to start with. Uh, so yeah, the idea is this should be relatively easy for a royal family. Uh, so let's see. Royal. Uh, royal and royal. So let's see, what would the price be for non-royals, right? I'm thinking three points. Points. None. And so we're adding two points to that. And let's make this four points for non-royals. And this one, uh, six points. So, so now we've created royal succession, right? Third, second, first. Um, so that means you can technically, if you for some hot reason can get four points, have a double ganger card, it clones other cards, but cost your life. Hmm. Do you think? Double ganger, like being in the background thing, that you are a double ganger, or that there's someone out there that's a double ganger of you. I can see multiple ways to implement that from what you're saying. So if you can, if you can define more what you what you're thinking, that would be interesting. Um, so we got the royal succession down. So let's uh, drop these. Um, Let's see, we got the title inheritance, so you stand to inherit the title. Um, that's a good question, because that does technically not apply to royal succession. But that's the noble family, though, right? <laughs> you hadn't thought that far. Yeah, I actually like the idea about a doppelganger, like for background, that you are the doppelganger and you've assumed the role of someone else. Uh, I kind of like that. Um, let's let's see what we can work with, it, right? So let's see. We got a background modifier. Ground modifier. Um, so let's see. Double ganger. Um, how do we describe that? Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, how to best explain my rule set quickly. So the rule set here is everything is on cards. It's going to be with power words to help you tell a story. And most of it is not really that dice based. It's more card versus card. So like when I'm doing an attack, I equip my longsword, my shield, and then I choose which attack type I do. Uh, but most of it is story focused, right? So this will help me tell, okay, so I'm doing this and it will tell me how offensive bonuses I have and defensive bonuses. And then I will maybe even block my opponents. Uh, so it's going to be more like storytelling back and forth, uh, who does what and so forth. Um, so with with all of this is you choose a class, you choose a race, you choose background, you buy on background modifiers, and then you have all these cards like uh, the soldier family with the background modifier of poor. So now I have this uh, to tell the story that I am a let's see a human. I come from a soldier family and stuff like that. I'm, I'm poor. But on the other hand, because I grew up, I'm now strong. Uh, so that helps me tell the stories, right? 
Um, and then these abilities here might give some action cards that I can use uh, based on that. So that's the, uh, the general geist of it. Um, if not, my video will go live on YouTube in four hours, five hours. Uh, that will tell you, or can you can directly watch the VOD uh, here on Twitch where I explained it yesterday. Uh, went in depth about everything. Um, but I hope that gives a, a little picture of what I am doing. So let's see, background modifier, double ganger. Um, so double ganger, we can do that two ways, right? We can do you are the double ganger, or you have a double ganger. Now, the double ganger one would probably be more intrigue, I guess, uh, to your story. Um, but that could be interesting, though, because you were. But is that needed because of that? No. Um, because God so far gives some ideas. Uh, this is a multiplayer game. This is basically uh, instead of Dungeon and Dragons, um, I am inspired by fourth edition. Um, this is basically going to be trying to remove the dice, the luck part, and going more over into the tactical part, uh, while still retaining the depth of a game system without having the complexity uh, of so how many things you need to know. Um, so that's kind of where I'm working towards. Um, uh, but let's say you are... Because that's kind of a storytelling thing. So if you are being replaced by someone, you can basically tell the story yourself by buying like the hunted or disowned and, or the poor uh, thing. Yeah, the game will require a GM. Um, I might uh, also. I'm kind of inspired by this old card game, Dragonstorm. That is also a GM card game uh, storytelling system. So these are kind of the the ideas that I am uh, borrowing from uh, from all of that. But yeah, it requires GM uh, to storytell. Uh, it's basically like the same storytelling that uh, a DM, DM would do in, in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, I just want to make it visually... Um, easy for new people and old people um, to to pick it up, right? So the idea here is, um, and actually let me show you this too. So my, my original first draft was sort of like this, where, I don't know if you can see it too much, basically you have these plastic things in front of you, showing you uh, all your different kind of uh, things you wear in slots. So this would be the helmet slot. This will be the backpack slot that shows you you can have 10 items because it's a backpack of holding. There's no weight limit. Uh, you got the mount and you got what shield or offhand weapon you have, your main weapon here, your armor type. You can have a ring, you can have some boots and you can have a belt. And then on the opposite side, you would have like, the character stats, the abilities, and stuff like that, all the way down. And it has now improved into, because once I started working on this concept, I'm like, imagine, and then I saw a, um, what's it called, a Kickstarter for a 3D printed uh, character sheet. Uh, that's basically an overlay, and then you can write in the holes. And I was like, what if I expand this into a 3D printed sheet? So, like, this is the attack card. It doesn't need to be much bigger. Uh, but it keeps telling you what do you have equipped, right? It's easy to see what do I hold in my hands currently. Because that's some of the things. And then, what if I extend that into an A4 sheet where, like this, along with the class and race and stuff, lies just on top of each other. And if you need the special rules for that thing, you just pull out the card, read it, and stuff it back in instead of opening the book. So that's the, uh, the current evolution. Uh, so these cards, uh, you get the entire deck, and it's color-coded, and it will be... Uh, shown to like okay you start with uh, choose a race 
and then you choose one of your race cards and then the next uh, the the list will tell you go on and choose the uh, class or choose the background and stuff like that and then you just go through and like choose one card and then it will tell you go to background choose one background and choose one modifier or two depending on whatever we do you got two points to buy background modifier cards and stuff like that choose out of those and then we'll go on to like um, because of your background you can get to choose a physical stat or a mental stat to uh, to pick and you get like one or two choices so that helps define how you grow up and then you got your class that will also allow you to maybe choose between one or two uh, stats to get stronger and that will help you tell your story so instead of <coughs> having a dexterity plus two or dex 15 or whatever right which to people don't really mean anything it's like oh yeah i got a plus two modifier but what does that mean in storytelling i have a dexterity of 15 what does that mean in storytelling but telling a person you're just average right or telling them you are actually uh, very um, athletic that means something like you're extremely athletic so and th this is the way the the system is built up instead uh, and those things will then unlock special moves along with your classes and stuff um so let's see here double gator hmm so how do we do that um Background modified double ganger. Uh, you assume. But that's kind of an evil thing, isn't it? Well, it can be evil. Or their son died, you happen to look like him, you to being an orphan, but a double ganger choose to replace him. Uh, hmm, that's a good question. I mean, it can be used for uh, evil. Yeah. Let me put on some coffee while I think of that. Yeah, many, many ways that can be done. Like, very. <laughs> um... So it can be uh, I mean that will allow you to like oh yeah get in there but I'm a double ganger so I'm actually taking over that role or that role or that role exactly that's the that's the entire idea behind this i want to give you the words to tell your story like i want to be able to easily make you able to tell like i'm very strong so i can lift this boulder instead of oh yeah i got a 15 strength and i rolled high enough i can lift this boulder right that's that's boring like you don't know if you can whereas a strong man will tell you i can move this thing i can move this thing right so those are the the kind of things i'm going for um well let, let's let's leave it right double ganger <clears throat> now we got it written down so we can definitely come back to it at some point okay so we got the raw succession so that's good we got uh, we need more rich where's the other rich there we go so we got rich one so we definitely need more levels of richness um so let's write that background modifier rich two so i have no idea how many levels there should be i'm thinking five would be a good number uh, background fire 
So like this means you, you can live a, a normal good life. You can live a very good life, extremely good life. And then like four and five is, is like, oh yeah, you are kingdom level thing. Um, well, yeah. So let's see here. Modifier. Rich four and rich five. Background. Um, modifier. Yeah, I'm thinking kingdom level or like international trading family and stuff. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like rich four is noble like that's a very rich noble um, so it, it's still a fluid thing but yeah let's 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 define this as kingdom level level uh, let's make this uh, royal slash or not noble slash Trader King. So rich four is noble slash trader king. Rich five is kingdom level. Rich three is like a wealthy trader. Uh, slash. Uh, wow, let's call this rich noble. <laughs> rich noble because kind of if every noble started a rich four, that would be insane. Uh, just riches, yeah, exactly. Uh, which three? So that would be like um, a standard noble thing. Noble and rich merchant? Nah, not rich merchant. Uh, let's just make merchant or trader. Actually, trader. Because merchant is another thing. And rich two, that should be like merchant uh, or wealthy. Wealthy. Or would that be rich? I don't know. So what would be rich one? <laughs> uh, comfortable, I guess. Then we're going to find them more later on, right? Same with prices and so on and so forth. Because there would be, I'm like, rich royal family should have cheaper for some things, whereas, well, maybe not actually. Because if you are, well, if your father's the king, it should be cheap enough for you to basically get like this. Depending on where you are in the succession. Hmm. So maybe these should come with rich. That's a good question. Exactly, that's my thinking too. Like all the small things with rich one, yeah. I'll buy that food, I'll buy that arrow, I'll buy those things. Let me get my coffee. So that just made me think of something else we need. We need to have debt. <laughs> we definitely need to have debt, right? So, uh, back, ground, modifier. fire, that one. Um, Question is, should we do all the way up to debt five? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> you're rich, but you're also in as much debt as you have richness, which means basically if someone decided to come collecting, I 
kind of like that. That could be interesting. That could be really interesting, actually. Having those mechanics once you get to that level. Um, let's start with that, actually. Um, exactly, and let's say if you, you choose that, that may, might allow you to buy more modifiers, right? Because we want people to go into negatives, kind of like um, if you are a, a strong, but you can be a sickly person, right? So that means you get maybe an extra point to buy another attribute of, and, and so on and so forth. So I want bonuses and want negatives and stuff like that. So yeah, modifier. So we need to figure out, actually, it doesn't need to be multiple levels of this. This is just, or should it be? Right, so either this will attach to your rich thing, but you can also be poor and be in heavy debt, right? So yeah, we'll, 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 we'll keep them. Like, imagine you have a, a, a poor and you have a kingdom level debt. <laughs> that could be so much fun. Oh man, I would want to play a character of that. Yeah, afflictions. Oh yeah. We need to look into physical stuff too. So we got financial parts. We got um, titles and stuff like that. Oh, we need, we, we're going to need a whole background modifier system as well this can be really deep really fast if we don't split it up like imagine looking through all of these without splitting up in any way like in economics or uh, titles and lands so let's see here we got economics we got titles and lands um what else do we have? We got afflictions. Shins. We got tragic stuff as well and more. So yeah. Um so let's take a look at continuing the background debt. Ground modifier. Three. There we go. Oh yeah, escape slave. Yeah, that could be an interesting one. <clears throat> Let's write it down right away, just so we don't forget it. Uh, slave or escape slave. Wow. Well, Technically, well, you could be a slave. Well, yeah, it could be a story about that. And then you could be escaped slave. So, kind of crimes and criminal history. Yeah, that's a good, good idea. Background modifier. Dead and background the fire dead five kingdom level so hello you are now a slave and you got depth five on the other hand you are extremely strong extremely sturdy extremely intelligent extremely <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of like uh, what was it called that old game where you, you the, the joke was if you see a guy in a wheelchair that basically can't move or anything run um, yeah boom okay um, let's see background modifier OK, 
Okay, so slave and escape slave. Definitely going to put some value into that. We got poor. We got disowned. We got hunted. Um, so those definitely sort of negatives on you. Um, so that's definitely something we we need to see. Can we add more tragic things to this? Um, so we've got title, we've got title inheritance, inherited ownership, and upcoming ownership. So those are kind of titles and stuff like that. I like that. Um, thing with titles though, and again with upcoming ownership, it needs to have multiple levels too. So, the question is, um, either I make five levels of each and every one of those, or I make one card that's like modifier level one, and another card modifier level two. Um, eh, it's not going to work. Still going to be a lot of text for one card. and. Yeah, it's probably not going to work. Maybe, maybe not. Um, nah, it's going to be better this way, I think. At least for now. Some characters would be relative and nondescript with one or two defining features. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the thing with, like, let's say a title, right? There are different values of titles, too. Like, inheriting... Uh, Barony or Baron is much different than Duke. Um, so we need to, or Prince even as well. So we need to have levels of these two. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm guessing we're going to need modifiers for each single title. And they're going to be more expensive. The same thing with inheritance, right? Um, yeah, I think that's that's going to need more. Um, so let's see, what kind of titles would be in play here, right? So. We definitely need, like, Baron. We are going to need a Duke. Uh, oh, what's the other one? Um, um, we can have a Sir. Slash Knight. Um, Baron Duke. Uh, Oh, what, what's the other one called? Count. I think Count comes before Duke. Um, and then, of course, we got Prince. Bad Nick titles. <laughs> they got the goat molester. It could be fun enough. Um, I just don't it just needs a lot more uh, for being a valid card um, like bad nickname that follows you everywhere that could be a card and then you can define or roll on a long list of bad names and stuff that's going to follow you around or bad rep actually yeah, I like the bad rep thing. That that's just gonna keep surfacing. Um, I actually like that a lot. <laughs> like, hey, that's the guy who. <laughs> uh, modifier. Uh, bad reputation. Um, 
I like that idea. That's actually pretty interesting. So like, yeah, you're disowned, you're hunted, you're poor, you're actually a slave too, and you got a bad reputation following you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, prince and king. So we got inherited title. Um, let's see, Baron, Count, Duke, Prince, one, two, three, four, five. So we stick with those, right? Those are the inherited titles. Yeah, I, I can live with that. And then they're like price one to five uh, as well. Uh, well, that's here's the title is technically this as well royal succession like this means you're number one in line to inherit the title of king right and this already gives you the title of prince so How do we go about that? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. So that leaves Prince and the King out, right? So if we remove those and just do um, Knight or Sir, uh, well. Actually, just do Baron, Count, and Duke. I guess we could do that, right? Hmm. Yeah. I think that would work. Uh, so let's see. Baron. Uh, Duke. One, two, three. That's just for now at least to um, look for that. Or we could go a card directly, right? Yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, ground powder fire. Oh, using so much pencils. <laughs> Um, so what do we call we call the title inheritance or title let's start with that title baron so that's the first one yeah i need to move all of these so many things yeah so many things so little table <laughs> Uh, bad rotation. So let's see here. Baron. Back round. Modifier. Count. Oh, yeah. Title. Count and. Modifier. Duke. Okay. So these are the three higher ones, right? And I mean you start the game with the title. And then we make the title inheritance, which is cheaper. Fire title inheritance Baron Back Ground Water Fire Title Inheritance since we'll worry about the cost later of course um, I 
It's been a while since I've been writing this much with my hands. I'm a keyboard guy. <laughs> Modifier and title. Sons and Duke. Okay, so now you can view roll succession and stuff like that. Oh yeah, we, we're going to have all of those things in because basically to get this, when, when you buy your, get your first background, you get one background thing, but to get the higher levels, you will need negatives. Um, so we, we're going to need lots of negatives too. And you betcha I'm going to raid all the vampire or wall of darkness books because they got a ton of negatives too. So be, that's quite okay to come with that. So, uh, anyways, would anyone in the comment play D&D &D around fairly odd plans where the players play as Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda? I guess that could be fun, sort of way. The only problem is the um, all-powerful magic that they have, I guess. Uh, like, oh yeah. They're going to save us, uh, thing. That, that's what I would worry about. Um, okay, so we got the titles. Exactly. I, I would be, be worried about that part because they, they always swoop in and save the day and stuff like that. Um, So I don't know if that would be... I, I think it would be really fun for a one-shot story. Like, if you did a, a one-shot scenario and invited people on and it kept changing all the time and new people on and stuff, that would be hilarious fun. Uh, like, um, uh, things like the uh, Trash Panda thing or Crash Panda or whatever um, that Sam Regal did recently as well. Um, Stories like that, oh yeah, that would be amazing, hilarious. Um, so yeah, if you did a, did a one shot, I, I think that would be uh, hilarious. That then I wouldn't worry about. Oh yeah, they're just gonna fix every situation because then people would just gonna go nuts. But yeah, that could be fun. I, I could definitely see the interest in that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would play scenarios like that when I'm going to cons and stuff and. Uh, that's when I've had the most fun uh, is playing those kind of games where they take some hilarity concept and you just go all out for four or five hours and then it's done and you've had these amazing stories to tell. Like, uh, yeah, I, that was so cool. <laughs> I once played a, uh, a Barbie princess. Well, not a Barbie, but a girl dressed like that and i had uh, a stunt double that was like a, a half fat man with beard and uh, wearing the same clothes at the barbie girl and stuff um and it was hilarious i was the biggest action star because i did none of my stunts myself i was so fun to play um and we were locked in a, a house with a murder and stuff it was it was so funny uh like I, I used, I had like the stunt double. I could use him like three or four times or something like that. He, he was limited. So we are driving down the road in a, a minibus towards this house, right? And I'm like, oh, you guys are sweaty. I'm using my stunt double. And the GM and all the players were like, you're wasting him on that? Yes. <laughs> Wanna play D&D and Cyberpunk 2020? Well, those are two amazing games. I love them both. And yeah, I love Cyberpunk 2020. It's it's an amazingly fun world. And I love playing in it as well. Uh, my players keep dying though. I don't know why. Because, well, I do know why. Because they, even though I tell them, you need to seek cover. You can't play it just like Dungeon Dragons where you stand still and hack and slash. And they keep standing still in the middle of the road and getting shot to death. Um, so yeah, that's my issue <laughs> with my players. I have not had a gaming session without all the players dying. And that's not from lack of trying to make them survive. 
Uh, I'm not into Shadowrun that much, as I said, in, I'm into cyberpunk. I like the the world without all the magic. I like having uh, I like having just players and technology and all the things technology can bring without having to add all sorts of magic too. Uh, that just makes it too crowded, I think. I mean, Shadowrun's a cool world. I love playing the game as well, but yeah. I'm more into the tactical part, as uh, <laughs> JPG uh, on Twitch uh, saying too. Okay, so more negatives. We need to find more negatives. So we got. Let's see. Oh yeah, we forgot the ownership thing. Um, let's see here. So ownership. Oh, should that be for rich? Hmm. Or lands. Hmm. Because owning lots of land does not necessarily make you rich, right? You can be heavily in debt and stuff. Uh... Hmm. That's a good question. Like, if I'm a prince and I inherit the kingdom, I get ownership of the kingdom too. So that's kind of like, uh, well, land can mean wealth, but it has things back and forth. King in a black box. Hmm. Not sure what that is. Um, hmm. But yeah, what I'm thinking of is like it ownership can be like uh, ownership of my company or ownership of this land piece of land or ownership of this building in the city and stuff like that. That's more small time thing instead of like the really rich thing. Uh, hmm. Nah, let's wait on this. Let's do the negatives. That's more fun right now. Because we need more. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, I did show you all the uh, prof. Well, that's actually, yeah. Uh, profession, I have not written those yet. Um, they are in. So basically, the idea is that. Uh, you on, on top of your skills and stuff like that, you can have as well choose a profession from these or another profession as well. Um, so that's the, that's the general idea that you, you get a profession as well on top of that. I don't think I have... No, not since my early days. Like, uh, the only one I've had actually done is like uh, the smith here trade, right? Where you can mend and adapt armor and stuff. That's about the only thing I ever made into the game yet. Um, but let's wait a moment on defining professions. Uh, let's do that after though. So let's write it here. Um, uh, professions. Uh, there. So we remember those. Okay, negatives, more negatives. Okay, so we got, let's move things a bit more to the side. So you can see that, there, 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 and there. Poor slave, okay. So, let's see. Um, So I got a question for you, Ghost Graph. Was it supposed to be Ghost Giraffe or is it Graph, like a name of Graph? Uh, okay, so let's see addiction. Um, background. Modifier. Hmm. 
question should we go that low? Um, like giraffe, okay. <laughs> I wasn't wrong in that then. So we got an addiction. I like that, that you're addicted to either drugs or alcohol and stuff like that. So let's write down drugs, alcohol, and others, right? Um, minor negatives, I'm thinking those are maybe too minor um, to at least convert something positive, right? Like, you shouldn't be able to have a lisp and then be rich because of that. <laughs> um, so that should be more into, if you buy the miners into charisma or something, um, so you're less charismatic, then that might be an add-on or something, I don't know. But it would be interesting to, to see if we can get it in, in a way to help people put it on, right? Remembering that it's there. Because if you're not a professional actor and stuff, or role player, it's not easy coming up with all these things. So yeah, we, we will need a lot of possible guidance to people if they want it. Oh, sweet coffee. Um, so let's see, we got slave, escape, slave, poor, disowned, hunted. Um, should probably into wanted instead, actually. Wanted, um, and then you can figure out what for. Well, I guess we could make multiple levels of wanted actually, because you can be wanted for like uh, need to pay a big fine, or you can be wanted for murder, or you can be wanted for mass murder, right? So let's do that. Background modifier one to two. So if we do this like one to one. So like this is minor, more local thing, I guess. Uh, minor slash local. This is major slash um, worldwide. This world, and then we do one to three. Hey, we're gonna come up with the movie. <laughs> Wanted. Players will try to break the game by using them. I'll just pay that with immersion reserve to ser serve you due to body odor. Yeah, but I'm thinking that's more over in the uh, charismatic thing. Whereas if you are uncharismatic, uh, it might be your behavior. Or and again, taking a shower is kind of in your behavior thing. So I'm thinking. I would put those over into the negatives on uh, if you choose negatives on your charisma. Um, that's what I'm thinking, at least. Uh, ground modifier. So one, two, three. Right, so this is like small time, this is major, kind of like murder, slash mass murder. So wanted one would mean, hey, if you get caught, you get to jail, right? And these, if you get caught, you get killed probably. <laughs> and this is like everyone is out to get you. I kind of like that. Uh, I kind of like that though. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so let's see. We got a slave poor. You disown means you have lost everything. You got bad reputation that follows you around. Uh, Double ganger. We need to find out at some point. We've got addictions. Um, 
illnesses and contagious disease, right? Or um, because once you go frail, oh, that could be interesting. So if you go into the negatives on the sturdy side, like your constitution, if that goes into the negatives, you get to choose afflictions or um, diseases, right? And you can also choose them in the background modifier. Hmm. That could be interesting. But what kind of diseases would be debilitating enough to warrant like being able to buy richness or buying a kingdom? What kind of things? Is there any diseases? Um, I mean, there is leprosy, right? Um, I guess that's debilitating enough because it doesn't kill you fast or anything. It actually lets you live for a way long time, right? In a world of magic. But that would normally be curable by magic, right? Especially in a fantasy world where you have clerics all over. So, uh, lycanthropy. I wonder, could that be? Well, it's kind of a gift, right? Unless you make it like really, hey, you're just turning into an NPC for the full moon. I kind of like that. So it's not like the werewolf stories where, hey, you got full control over it. No, 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 no. You turn into an NPC every full moon. If you're outside. I like that. I like that. I like that kind of lycanthropy. <clears throat> Life-limiting diseases. For you die of sniffle globe and goblin disorder. <laughs> oh yeah, that could be hilarious. Um, <clears throat> I don't like limiting the years though. Um, I would want something else it affecting. Um, could be that your strength would slowly go down. And stuff like that until you got it cured. And there's only like very rare cure somewhere and stuff like that in the world and that's that's more workable i think uh so where was i uh lycanthropy yes Ground fire <clears throat> lycanthropy <laughs> Change into a female goblin. Ooh, ouch. That's a bad one. <laughs> yeah. What? Thirsty NPC. Boom. Let's keep it in for now, at least. Um... Actually, it doesn't give you any bonuses at all, except technically you can only be killed by silver. Uh, you can only die. So that's pretty powerful in that way, right? If you keep the lycanthropy to, you can only die by silver, even in your human form. Uh, it just means you don't die easily. But this game is not about dying that often, right? Um, cursed. We can do cursed instead. Of them. Modifier. Cursed. Minor. Uh, cursed major. Background. Modifier. Okay. 
We need to figure out at some point what they do, but I like the idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm left-handed. I'm an evil lefty, as they call me when we're doing short firing. Um, but yeah, the fun thing is I use my mouse with my right hand, but I write with left hand and I fight with left hand and stuff like that. Yeah, evil lefty, that's what they call them in sword fighting, because everyone, when you train sword fight, you're used to people having the weapon on the opposite side and shield on that side. But suddenly, when you flip that in a lefty, suddenly, and things are equally mirrored, people who are normally used to fight only others with the same thing, they, yeah. <laughs> Let's just say lefties get an advantage. So that's why they are called evil lefties, because there are not that many of them. Um, so we were talking about, 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 about diseases, right? So we want some debilitating diseases. How do we get that? Um, um, so we're going to have something that leeches your strength, right? Uh, so let, let's say you're creating a... Um, I've done my fair share at some point. I haven't done it for years, uh, but I've done quite a lot, both in medieval uh, recreation companies and stuff like that, the SCA, Society for Creative Anachronism, and uh, LARP. Um, uh, that's more of a cursed thing. Um, let's see. So, if we go into diseases, right? Affliction diseases, they affect your mind, they affect your body. So, what I'm thinking is like a debilitating disease that slowly leeches your strength. So, if you have a wizard that has high intelligence, he might buy that, right? He might buy something that leeches his strength. So he starts out having not bought anything in strength, he starts out normal. So once the uh, sickness ticks in, it will take him to negative strength. And uh, then later on it will take him to even more negative strength. So it will make him weaker and weaker during time. Now that would not impair his my major gameplay of magic, but it will impair him a lot because he is weak, weak, weak. Um, and then go on for other diseases, like a warrior could buy something that slowly leeches his intelligence, uh, and so forth. So I'm thinking we might look into that, but then that might become a standard of getting that. But again, if we allow cures in endgame, right, you can get cured at some point. Uh... Or mid game, right? Where oh, you found a cure for this, um, so you can overcome it in time. But it's more of a hey, you can get a starting extra starting point thing. That could be interesting. Bring keep alive to support it only by his magic? Yes. <laughs> Things like that. I mean, that could be interesting. Like, the entire body slowly melts away until you are floating brain. Well, that could go for the mentalist, actually. Um, I could actually... Oh, that was... Oh, oh man. God damn it. Ah, oh, had to go that way, right? So, if you ever read the... Um, books by uh, Julian May about the uh, galactic milieu and stuff. Yeah, Jack the Bodiless, exactly. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Now I have to have that in. Damn you! <laughs> now I have to have that in. Like, the body is just wasting away. You're nothing but a fro floating brain. Oh man, that is gonna be cool. You realize you just tacked on something huge for the mentalist class, right? Ah, uh, so um, how do we 
do that? How do we describe that? That's an expensive one, though. I mean, the the road to to the end. It's like uh, it's like saying, "Oh yeah, you're slowly turning into a lich," but until you turn into a lich, you got no benefits. But once you turn into a lich, you're a lich. Hey, you're immortal. You got all these sorts of cool things, right? So, if we take that stance. Oh man, that is oof. That's a nasty one. Like your body slowly withers away and stuff like that. I like that though. Uh, we need to figure out a cool name at some point, but uh, let's call it Jack the Bodyless, right? In honor of him. Uh, uh, and yeah, I found found out actually uh, some months ago. I found out that Julia May actually passed away a few years ago. Um, so kind of sad of that. But oh man, I love that. Uh, story i've actually uh, re worked on some rules for actually making a role-playing game over her, her world background Mod fire. jack thing disease Physically, um, yeah, those books were so good. I've been reading them like I don't know, maybe once a year for <laughs> the last many, many years. So I, I just love that world, the universe, the the powers and stuff. Oh man! So it's it's a really good story. I really hope. Someday someone is going to make a film about it. And if not, I hope I can make the film about it. So, officially, uh, for years, until just a floating list brain. Um, yeah, I think he died a few years back, so I was kind of sad. Um, boom. So that's the Jack the Bottle list thing. Um, but that's like a rare one. But I like the idea. I really like the idea. Oh man, that could be so fun. So in my need to go, <laughs> yeah. It actually needs a TV series, I think, a TV movie sort of thing, because it's gonna be a long ass story to tell. If you need to, t and you need to tell uh, all three parts, right? You need to tell all the uh, Golden Torque, you need to take all the milieu, and you need to take the uh, the introduction to the uh, um, stuff as well. So, um, where was I going? I don't remember. So, we need the seizures for the different stats, right? So, let's see here. Um, background. Modifier. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 Okay, we can come up with with cool names later on, right? So let's call it uh, strength this is getting weak per five years. And start weaker. Minus one. Strong. Boom. So we do it that way. World. Uh, characteristic cards. What do you mean world? Like in world creation? Because that's something totally different. Um, so my main world, the one I'm usually uh, developing on, is a 
world where they have lost most of their high magic and stuff like that, and they're just currently starting to uh, rediscover it. There are no other races. It's basically humans versus humans. And uh, But of course, there's tons of undead and demons and angels and elementals and stuff like that. Magical creations, but there's no other races in that one. There are, there are different folks who grew up uh, different characteristics and stuff, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, I don't know what exactly you mean with that. So let's see. Back ground. What a fire. Sturdy. Disease. Start minus one. Sturdy. Boom. And back with modifier. Uh, athletic disease. Uh, uh, minus one. Um, I'm actually. Uh, oh, you can actually handle it with cards. Um, I am working. I have a side project that's standing still, but it's basically a uh, co-op world creation game where you can use it to create your own world. Uh, so, uh, let's see. I did a quick prototype before uh, things. So, one of the things to start with is, and I, I made these out of pearls because that was the easiest thing I had access to at that point and now I'm getting a 3D printer so this is not no longer needed but basically like players would be placing down uh, these things here uh, and building a world together um, like that and then you could have these uh, cross the edges and stuff like that um, and then after that you would slowly give it magical properties and stuff like that so all of these things the players would be building together like one player had these tiles and he would like oh yeah i'm placing that and then the other one is placing the next one uh, so you can easily do it with cards you just uh, but it, it's not inherent and needed for this it can be used to build a world you're gonna play in like this and it's gonna be a project i'm gonna develop later on uh, and now that I'm getting a 3D printer, hey, I can print the tiles and they will be looking really, really cool. So, yeah. Um, strong, sturdy, athletic, intelligent disease. Um, so, yeah, basically, I like making guides and guidelines and tools for people to make things easier so it's definitely part of the overall entire package i would like to give like this with the cards i'm gonna have uh, 3d printed stuff and and things like that you can print out and 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 use to help you on the gameplay as well and there's gonna be like uh, small coins for players and all sorts of things to to help you easily look at things and and see oh yeah that's how it is instead of having to count numerous things and stuff and that's why instead of having like 50 60 200 hit points it's gonna be like oh yeah you, you got way few hit points it's easy to see are you wounded or not um, uh, so let's see here um tell me gems this is um let's see Back. Ground. Not a fire. Uh, it's called uh, wisdom. And of course, we're going to come up with some really cool names at some point uh, for them. So, yeah. Uh,
the fire uh, uh, this, nah. so we got some overall diseases and we got one that's basically gonna ruin all your physical characteristics I mean imagine being a player you cannot do anything physical you cannot interact with the world except by magic <laughs> that's gonna be interesting and oh yeah um, in case any of you are interested in um, being on a live stream with a role-playing campaign in the future I am currently uh, finishing up the uh, creation on my Burning Sun um, campaign which is an epic campaign where uh, the players basically have to save the world, and the world is dying to heat death by a huge sun uh, that is slowly getting closer and uh, burning the world to death. And yeah, the players are one of the few good races left because all the other good races escaped. And that means all the monsters have taken over. Uh, and I'm gonna need players in uh, probably uh, weekdays in the evening, once a week. So uh, if any of you are interested at some point, uh, let me know. And it's of course gonna be European time, so that's gonna be like uh, six, around seven hours from now, it's the starting time, so. Uh, but it's not going to be for a few months yet. Okay, so we got diseases galore, one for all, uh, all stats, one for all the physical stats. Um, so we do one for all the mental stat. What time zone? Uh, European, uh, central time zone. So it's going to start at 1800 roughly. Uh, GMT plus two currently, I think. Um, or plus one, depending on what time of year. <laughs> but basically it's going to be Central European. Uh, yeah, let's make one for all the mental ones. Um, wait, that's the zombie. <laughs> You're slowly turning into a zombie. Wait a minute, that's not going to work. Like, oh yeah, you, you're just wasting away all your mental parts and turning into a zombie. Huh. How would that work game-wise? Like turning into a zombie, how, how would that work? Like for a player slowly getting weaker mentally and stuff. Yeah, New Zealand, that's kind of the off time zone, so that's going to be insanely late or early for you, probably. Uh, yeah. But it's going to be uh, live-streamed and on YouTube, so at least you can watch it. Um, yeah, so it's going to be mental wasting away, right? Mentally wasting away um, so slowly turning into a zombie I guess um, no charisma no nothing I mean that could be intensely fun it's really debilitating though like you can't do anything else but fight basically and, and live that's it you can't critical things less like oh yeah Push me forward. Okay, I gotta hack this guy. Stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna be fun to roll. It can be fun for the few right people, but I'm not sure it's gonna be fun for people like, oh, that sounds cool. And then they're like, what? Wait, I can't do anything. I'm basically just a boring role player. <laughs> um, hmm. That's a good question. Would that even work, right? Well, 
how to do it with cards is you would limit the character to fewer and fewer cards, right? Basically like, oh yeah, you can only have these three actions to choose between. Uh, kind of way. Like your your combat hand can at most be, be this amount of cards. Um, so that would limit you to the combat cards. That's one way to implement it, right? Basically, like you're just doing the same action over and over again. Basically, like when you hit the bottom of this, you're basically like, yeah, I got one attack and I'm using that all the time. And the players have to point me in that direction and I'm attacking what's in front of me and stuff. Uh, and then you become an NPC, basically. Um, but do like, until then, though, it's still just making you weak in everything else. Um... I mean, it could be an interesting story. So let's keep it for now. Mentally wasting away. Uh, charisma. Wisdom. Intelligence. Turns into... So well, something stronger than a zombie, though. But let's... let's zombie NPC. And... And... So, yeah. Still not going to do much, right? Uh, so we got disease for all six stats. Six stats. And we got one for all the physical, one for all the mental. Um, so that's diseases, I guess. Uh, we've got curses in case we want to push something with the blurting out truth and stuff like that. But that's an entirely different thing we need to make. We need to make a curse system first. Uh, but that's going to be fun as well, making that. Um, so, let's see. So we got all the stats. We got major and minor cruises. We got lycanthropy, uh, which technically gives a bonus, but a lot of negatives. Um, we got the wanted levels. Which is, can definitely be nasty if people choose them. We've got addiction, which gives negatives if you don't have things. We've got double gang, we need to look into how to work that in. Uh, got the bad reputation thing, uh, which definitely gonna make it harder to everyone wanting to work with you or people you associate with. Uh, we got disowned, which means that if you're like in a noble family, hey, I'm disowned, helps you tell the story, right? Poor, uh, slave, and escaped slave. So we got a ton of negatives. I like that. So we got all the economics. We got all the negatives. We got we got to look at the ownership ones now, right? Um, so we got the titles. Those we did again. All the titles we got the prince king uh, stuff like that we got uh, let's see so now we need to define um, what kind of levels of ownership right so we got what um, plot of land I need to sharpen this again. Hey, so much lead being used. Um, so we've got a plot of land, right? And what would we call the next stage, right? Um, large plot. plot. And then we can do a... Can you have an artificial creating golden race so players can roleplay a wizard creation? Hmm. Yeah, that could be doable. Could actually be quite doable. Um, let's see. Um, let's do it medium. Or large, actually. Let's do it both. Medium slash large, for now at least. Uh, golem. 
Um, yeah. So let's add the golem to uh, <clears throat> or vein. I actually don't think I've read those books. But I do like the idea behind having a magical creation golem. That fits in well with my standard world, so um, where elementals basically <clears throat> Basically, in, in my world, is that the um, long gold world was ripped apart by the good god and the bad god fighting. And all the people who died there, uh, their souls got, depending on where their souls were on the spectrum, they were affixed to the certain elements. And that created the elementals. And so technically, from there, you can say, hey, you just fix the element inside the golem, right? which is the soul. So that should be easy enough to transplant your soul over into the golem and that would make an elemental of sorts. Um, so yeah, that's definitely doable. Very dangerous, but doable. Um, okay. But yeah, I like having the option of that magical golem. When we, when we got the mine as well and the golem, then we're getting we're getting somewhere right and you can be a lich later on as well so we need to to look at also how how does one become a lich in this game is that like something players can unlock at some point uh, <clears throat> so anyways we got plot of land we got large plot uh what else do we need um huge i guess huge plot of land Boom, 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 large, huge. Um, what can we call the next one? So I'm thinking is like, uh, you know, the, the size of a barony, a uh, dukedom and stuff like that. What, what would we call size of that? Like an uh, entire county uh, size inheritance? thing um oh what was that called um no one you got like you got like a kingdom then you go a size down what is the size called what could you call that area without calling it a barony and stuff because it doesn't need to be fixed to that um, um I know the next one is going to be like kingdom size. Size. Um, district is kind of like a city district, so that's not going to work. Oh, what can I call that? Uh, hmm. I got nothing. Um, what is it called? What can it be called? Um, kingdom size. We need to go down on one. Um, province. Province. Yes. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Province size. So these three are for like normal people, and this is for uh, people in the other sizes as well. Yeah, that would that would work fine, I think. So plot of land is like for normal people. Large plot is for mm, kind of rich people. Huge plot is like yeah, I own this forest, all these lands you can see right here. Province is like yeah, I technically own everything else that you don't own. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's sizes I can I can work with, right? Plot of land, large plot, huge province uh, size and kingdom size. Yeah, that's gonna work out. So let's start background modifier. Wow, I've been streaming over two hours straight hours of working with this. That is awesome. Getting a lot of work done. Uh, so let's see. 
Oh man, that's a lot of cards. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Kingdom size, you do not inherit that already. You cannot start with kingdom size. That's like, no. Province size, you cannot start with province size unless... Oh, I guess you could allow it as a GM. I mean, sometimes you would want to, right? Well, let's think about that. Modifier. Um, inheritance. A uh, lot of land. Slash house. Boom. All right. So that's one. Inheritance one. Just to keep them easy. Background. Modifier. Inheritance two. Large block of land slash mansion something like that and then Harry turns three and that's gonna be like a huge plot hey more wine woohoo cheers I need more coffee so Yawns or something. Oh, yeah. So, has it been a good weekend for you? Uh, huge plot of land slash, uh, what's that called? Um, like having a huge, huge farm thing uh, in the old days, worrying about like the local owner thing. Ah, I know the Danish word, but I have no idea what this. Well, I probably have, but I can't remember it. <laughs> um, not just mansion, but a not a keep. Well. No, keep us the next level up. Um, um, oh, what's that called? What is that called? Long weekend, so you have tomorrow, Monday off? Oh, that is nice. That is lovely. Always nice with long weekends, right? So got anything good planned for tomorrow? Um... Oh, what's it called? What's it called? Um, bup, 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 bup. Oh. That big farm thing. See, that's the issue with not sitting in front of your computer doing this. Because <laughs> my mobile phone, yay, it's there. I can't really go on that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, good question. Good question. Ah, uh, oh, what is it called? Right up, you see the big. Ah, oh, really can't remember what it's called. I can't. God damn it! <laughs> oh well. Background. But uh, fire. Um, that's four. Um, uh, not really. Like it's the, you know what? What 
call they call the big farms uh have like lots of land on them but it's like the one the f one farm that's like controlling the local area and stuff um yeah not really sure what i'm looking for Slash keep. Aha. Boom. Ranch? Yeah, something like that. Uh, but ranch is more of a later term. Whereas this... In Danish it's called... Uh, local uh, Hergo, uh, which is led by a hair man. And basically meant that he was the local guy that employed everyone in, in the vicinity and stuff. Um, and ranch is the later version of that sort of um but it doesn't have the feudalism that i want um station yeah but still that's a more modern term uh i need a more medieval one oh, fire turns five Sar slash castle city etc. Um yeah. Well, we'll figure it out at some point. So that's the inheritance, right? That's the upcoming ownership. Uh and then, should we do something where you actually have inherited some? Freehold? Hmm. Guess I'll have to look it up at some point and see if that hold, yeah, holdings. Uh, not really the work. What the? Did that just stop? Okay, so T-Chat is really bugging me out. And now it's apparently can't even see my own stream. Great. Ugh, T chat. Sometimes you aren't worth it. Yeah, now I can't even see my own stream. Why can't I know that's the chat thing? Ugh. Hate it when that happens. Come on, close down. Yeah, boom. Out. Oh yeah, that doesn't close. Oh, I did it. Nope. Phone data signal is too low. What? I'm on Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm on freaking Wi-Fi. Lands domain. Yeah. Dominion. Dominion is more of a, a hold over things, right? Uh, let me get the coffee and then we'll figure something out. Okay, so let's mull over that name for later and keep going so we don't waste all the time thinking of one word. Uh, then I can try and see if the translator or something can come up with what the Danish word translates into at some point. There we go. Oh, that should be working again. Okay, so. That was the upcoming inheritance. Um, then we can do inherit it, right? Um, manor, yes, manor. Now that sounds like what I was looking for. 
or am I confusing manor and mansion? I don't know. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. <laughs> okay, so let's get background modifier inherited one. Or should we also call that ownership one? Because technically, once you've inherited it, you own it. It's just defining where you got it from. But maybe you didn't get it from that. Maybe you are actually rich by your own volition and bought this thing, right? Hmm. So, yeah, might just call it ownership one. Well, let's figure that out, right? Um, plot of land slash house. Okay. Um, Granada fire. So two owner two large plot slash yeah I think that will work out um background fire. Ship three and huge plot plot or manor there and ground modifier and four. Ship four, uh, province slash castle. Uh, and so the last two is going to be like extremely expensive, like only if you buy so many negatives or the, and the GM allows it and stuff. But I think it should be there. Uh, five. Ship five. Slash. See. Boom. There we go. So. Let's get back to all of this, right? So we got inheritance, we got already inherited, we got titles. Um, did we make one for each? Yes, we did. So we got title or title inheritance, right? Um, boom. Okay. So what we currently have is we got the royal succession, we got the titles. Uh, either you got them or they're upcoming. We got the rich ones. Uh, already we got the debt. We got inheritance. We got already inherited stuff. We got all sorts of negatives. Diseases, slave, poor. Um, uh, Bad rep, curses, 
all sorts of things. I like that. Um, that's taking us pretty far, right? Uh, so let's see. So we got the economics down. We got a lot of those. Boom. We got titles and lands. We got that. We got afflictions, tragic things, I'd definitely say. Um, do we have anything positive? Uh, oh yeah, more reputation-based stuff. We need positives, right? Um, reputation. And allies. Right? We should probably have that. Reputation and allies. Uh, just like it works in uh, the, um, oh, what are you called? Uh, World of Darkness things, right? Where you can have allies and stuff like that. Um, so let's see. How would the... Ah, it's wet underneath. Damn it. Um, honorable rep, yeah. Exactly. Um, so I'm more thinking your reputation is <clears throat> X size, right? And then you can define if it's a, what kind of rep it, if it is. Um, or should we, I should probably also put that in, right? because there's strength of reputation but the stronger your reputation is the farther it would spread automatically right so i think the range should just be stuck on the power of the reputation in itself so honorable and generous i think both should equally just be good reputation and then it's up to you, like, what is it based on? We could, of course, do that. I would certainly make a lot of different cards. And would they confer that much different, right? Like, if you're honorable or generous, well, both will make people kindly on you. They will ask different questions, though. Like, honorable, they will ask you to help them. And the other one, they will ask for money and stuff. Um... But both are asking for help, right? Uh, so the question is, would we need to have more than than that? Um, mm, good question. Um, background. And cheers, by the way. Um, let's just say reputation one. Yeah, but the thing is, in the general mass, will that make a difference if it's honorable, generous, or trustworthy, right? Whereas dishonorable and greedy... I don't know if people would treat you much different, right? They know you will abuse them somehow. No matter what, right? That's a good question. Because it can be complicated real quick if we try to write all of them down. I think we should just go with a simple one. Either way. Because then it's up to the storytelling. Um, so how do we say reputation one and then we have a scale the other way around? Um, oh, what's the word for that? Um, not reputation, the infamy, right? So let's see here. Uh, ground. Fire. Infamy.
So that should take out the bad reputation thing, because that's the infamy, basically. So now we got positive and yeah, fame or her reputation. Yeah, that's a good question. What would you call it, right? But usually, I have a reputation. Isn't that sometimes just associated with good? Except, of course, when they say bad rap. Um, but yeah, I call it fame. Ah, it has a wrong ring to it, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. What could be another word synonymous for reputation or a good reputation? Uh, nah, we can worry on that. We got in for me though. So, background, uh, fire for me too. So this is like local bad rep. Bad rep, this infamy two. Yeah, but usually people say bad reputation, right? So I guess that could work for now until we find something better. Um, so local bad rep, um, then we go to, oh, what was that word again? Problems, right? Uh, infamy 2, that's more of a province. Bad rep. Infamy 3. That's a kingdom bad rep. Uh, oh, can't see that. Background. Fire. So that's kingdom size. Fire. Uh, before, so that's more of a um, consonant bad rep, right? Yeah. Guess we would call it consonant. Yeah. Bad rep and five is like universal. <laughs> Five universal bad rep. So technically, you know who is a four. Custom muggles don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas this one is Khan. Everyone knows who Khan is. Khan! <laughs> ah, okay. So that was the infamy. Perfect. And again, because all of these modifiers, they can be added on during gameplay, this can rise and stuff like that. So I like that part. Uh, uh, local. That was province for two, right? Yeah. Province. Background modifier. 
Oh man, I've written that word so much. Can't wait until it's time to print these things instead. Three, province that was kingdom. Boom. Ground modifier. And that was consonants. Four. Consonant and five is universal. Representation five. Universal. Okay. Spicy again to see sneaky characters, try to minimize their reps. Good or bad, they want no one to know of them or even notice them. Yeah, exactly. So, the higher your rep, the more people is going to know what you're doing, and the more bad guys can follow along what you're doing too. So you have to think about it. It's like in Cyberpunk 2020. Oh yeah, you can wield a huge gun. You can be the fastest shooter right from the get-go as a new character. But you don't want to be that guy because everyone's going to know and everyone's going to challenge you. So that's, got, that's something I always teach my characters. Like, sure, you can buy your character up to be the best of the best from the start. But you don't have all the skills you need to survive there. So you're basically going to die fast. I warn players all the time. Um, so yeah, that's definitely going to influence people. But it, of course, it takes a GM that can actually handle it. Uh, which is why the higher levels ones is going to be blocked behind like up to GM thing uh, only by GM allowance and stuff like that and or even level gated or something I guess um, so tons of different things we can do at some point so we got the reputations down um, should we look at some allies things um, so allies means different things, right? Allies to a royal person and allies to a noble versus allies to a merchant versus allies to a soldier. So yeah. So I'm guessing we will need to... Because if you are like controlling a kingdom and got allies, well, that might be another kingdom. That's a whole lot of power. Whereas a soldier that has three allies, which is three friends coming along, right? Uh, so perhaps we shouldn't do allies. I think instead of doing like henchmen, friends, something. Um, servant, henchman. I guess we could do something along those lines, right? So a level one could be like a servant who comes along and take care of certain small things, shop for you and stuff. Exactly. It, it all means different things, which means people get different value out of it, which means it's going to be insanely difficult to price it right, which means we will need to make multiple ones if we do allies. So I'd rather do henchmen, right? Servants, henchmen, stuff like that. Employees. Um, let's see. So we could have like what? Servants? Henchmen and followers, right? Um, so, servants are like people hired to only do menial tasks. And it's about your character's charisma or terror factor. Yeah, some, something along those lines, or just paid, right? Because if you pay enough, they don't 
care about who you are. Uh, depending, but of course that's going to attract a whole different personality of people. Um, so let's see how we can mix that in with the charisma system and stuff. So hiring servants, hiring henchmen, or followers, right? So followers are people really loyal. Um, loyal. Money and power status, yeah. So many things that can influence. Um, so let's see, how would that work? And, and should we even worry about that in backgrounds? I guess it could be fun, like starting with, hey, you got a follower along, or you buy a follower later on, right? So it might have a level requirement, and money requirements, like followers is like, oh yeah, level and uh, money, or level at least, level plus rep, plus charisma. Yes, Shad, sorry, I am creating my own RPG system. Um, and it's a card-based RPG that is based on power words to help you tell the story better. Um, so that's the idea. Right now we're looking at backgrounds and background modifiers uh, to help people come up with interesting stories um, and flesh out. Shouldn't be in D&D? Oh, I can move it over there then. Uh, I can do that next time. I <laughs> hope that's okay. Um, let's speak. Oh yeah, they made those new ones, right? Yeah, that's right. They went from the creative ones, and they they did all that. Yeah, I'll do that on the the next one. Uh, or can I change it? Well, hang on. I can move it over there. Uh, let me go to my computer. Okay, there we go. Now it's changed. <laughs> oh yeah, I totally forgot about tax too. Uh, that's a problem actually with the um, what's it called? Uh, the mobile app. Uh, it does not allow tax. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll set up tax next time or something. It's, the problem is you need to set them every time you start a stream, which is why I find tax a bit annoying. So yeah. But yeah, that's true. As well, more standard henchmen. Familiars. Oh, pets. Yeah. Pets as well. Familiars. Cars and pets. Yeah, we definitely need to get that in too. Because I want pets. I want familiars. I want all those things. So servants. Henchmen are paid, yes. Um, uh, boom. boom, boom. Yeah, Twitch definitely needs to fix it. That's so annoying. But their their idea, I can see their idea behind it is that your stream changes, so that's why you have to set them every time. But yeah, <laughs> it's annoying for those of us that tend to stream the same things, having to reset it every single time, and it doesn't work. Uh, oh yeah, the no tags on mobile, definitely. Uh, I wish I could just add it on like right now. I would have to go over to the computer again and put in some tags. So yeah, I guess I could do it that way when starting it up or something. Oh, that's right. So on the mobile app here, I can't have my starting screen and loading and stuff like that. But why not just make a piece of paper saying loading stream? That could be hilarious. <laughs> um, Let's see here, so we can do something along like this, I guess. Oh, that's a small thing. Let's do that. Use graph paper. <laughs> so 
So I could do like things like that. Boom, be right back. Ta-da! <laughs> I could be, oh yeah, use a square paper and then draw a dungeon around it and stuff like that. Oh man, that could be fun. Well, we'll definitely have to play around with that because I'm gonna do more streams like this anyways. Um, end screen, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, thanks for watching. I guess. Thanks for boom. I think you're gonna look on. So what you did with your video banner, you made a dungeon? Ah, that's cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, I can't, but ah, I can log at it later or something. So anyways, let's get back to this, right? So that's a huge system in itself. Making all of these. So I'm thinking let's push them a little bit to the side for now before we start looking at them. But that's growing alongside professions and stuff. Uh, it's gonna take a while. So we got reputation. Allies is gonna come with that. Um, HF Hunter, how are you doing, man? Uh, it was good. What was good? Okay. <laughs> right out of the blue. Are you a bot, Mr. Chavander? <laughs> so, let's see. We got a ton of negatives. Oh yeah, we were looking into some more positive as well, right? So we got positive reputation. Um, we got... Oh, what else can we do? Can we do... Can we do some positive, like, two abilities or something? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Should, should we do that? Hmm. Are you tired? Ah, fair enough, man. Go to bed. But I'm guessing you're still having trouble sleeping and stuff. Um... Good eyesight. Huh? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm really confused. Uh, hmm. Yeah, how do we do that? Oh yeah, you're meaning an ability of good eyesight. Ah, the fast learner. Yeah, okay, I follow you now. Um, uh, how would we implement good eyesight? Like, oh yeah, I have some improved senses idea. Um, where did that guy actually go? Uh, like improved senses, which can come with eyesight and hearing and stuff like that. So, um, heightened senses. I could have sworn I had it somewhere. Didn't get stuck in knowledge. Snoop. Uh, Feet, of course. Aha. Um, night vision, dark vision, heightened senses. Yeah, that was under feats. Um, so special abilities and stuff. Um, so that's where that's gonna be. Um, not sure if I'm gonna hold on to that, and because I don't see that as a background modifier necessarily. I see more as a physical property thing. Um, <coughs> uh, ba -ba so, let's see. So what else do we have in possible to backgrounds, right? Hmm. So yeah, for, for background, I'm more thinking like uh, world things, um, allies, reputation, and stuff like that. Um, 
So yeah, now the question is, when I do have feats and stuff, should the Caesars be there instead? Hmm. Good question. Yeah. Yeah, good education. Oh yeah, education. That's actually so where would what would that give? Something else, right? Um, or actually good education would be under the uh, professions, right? You get you are instead of being taught something, you get a um uh, higher education learning and stuff right so that should be over there uh, like uh, educated I guess or something or higher education or something like that I think because um, I would actually count that as an uh, upbringing in self uh, which is technically your profession, sort of, what you've grown up to learn and, and do, actually. Because it takes so many years, right, to get a good education. Um, family connections could definitely be an, a thing, yes. Um, but how would... But again, we would run into that issue with how do I make one that fits all, or I have to make one that f for each different family types. Um, because family collections at a soldier level is very much different than family connections at a kingdom level, right? Local area knowledge, that's under knowledges instead. Um, I guess that could be like a free thing you could get though, like you get to pick a knowledge. So like you can get geography, knowledge, novice, but local, I guess, hmm. That's a good question. How do we, so you can get that and you get to pick that, ah, that could be doable, yeah. I'll work fine. Um, so local upbringing, which basically uh, gives the knowledge of local geography and yeah. So let's see here. Background. Uh, fire. Up, bringing, uh, bringing slash uh, roaming, uh, get which. Fee Local. Uh, I guess that could work. Fears of money, old brothers, other side of debt. Okay, yeah, so you favors, yeah. Ah, money owed, yes. Okay, I see that. Hmm. That could definitely be be interesting, right? So life debt uh, owed by someone and uh, being owed money, money lender. So let's see here. Background. The fire.
Blender. Um, So for now we're working with like rich minus one or something, but it can also be just go away and just someone owes you money. Uh, money lender, um, that doesn't take away your income, right? It's just for, oh. Duh. So having a high income does not necessarily mean you have a high fortune. Right? If you're spending it all on upkeep and stuff like that. But if you also have a high fortune as well. Aha! Uh -huh. So we need to have a fortune setting as well too. Like what you have in cash, right? Like owning a lot does not mean you have cash. Yeah, that could be... So that's not rich. So fortune... Money lender minus fortune. Um, one. Um, one. Money. Uh, I guess that could also be leveled up and down and stuff like that. And then you have the life debt thing. But then again, like, um, I guess that just for any influential person or something. And then later on we can define more, right? I do like the idea of a life debt as well. You owe a life debt to Hism Hism? Oi, be gone with you! <laughs> um, so, let's see. Um, money lender, life debt. I haven't got the normal debt thing as well. That's definitely working. Um, need to have fortunes or savings, I guess. Uh, responsibilities. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's I like that. That's that's very very broad. Yeah. Uh, background. Fire. Fortune one has X gold and etc. etc. So background fire tune two. Four and back on the fire, fortune five. Okay, so we got the fortunes to go with the rich, stuff like that, or income. We might change that to income instead. Um, so definitely. So let's see uh, responsibility or what can we call that? Um, life promise or something. Mm. 
yeah, life promise, I guess, would be an okay word for it. So, let's see here. Background. Fire. Life. Promise. Uh, protect someone. Yeah, phobias. Yeah, I guess we could do some phobias, like uh, phobias versus uh, arachnids. So whenever you meet spider or spider-like creatures, you're basically gonna be like, yeah, you, you do do a check and see if you can even do something besides running screaming around and stuff. Um, phobias of height and stuff like that. I guess we could look into that. So let's uh, do life promise, protect someone, fulfill uh, requests. Request, etc., etc., right? So we got that. Um, Phobia. So yeah, doesn't really need to flesh it out now. We can come up with phobias later and stuff. But let's see. Uh, we can have what? Fire. Fire. We can have heights. Uh, we can have spiders. Uh, dogs. Um, what else can we have? Undead, I guess. Because in a world with lots of undead, then that's definitely it. Um, water. Uh, slash sea slash lakes. Um, what else can we have that can be really debilitating that players will meet fairly often? Um, the undead might actually be too much. <laughs> like in a world where most of the enemies are either humans, undeads, or demons. Oh, that could be bad. But could be hilarious though. It was something we have to think about. Mental illness, yeah. Yeah, but the problem with that is it's easy to say like this character is mentally ill. But Unless it's very specific role playing, it's difficult to put a point on it. Like, oh yeah, he's mentally ill, he sees visions, right? That can just be a fun gimmick. And then he's got a free point, right? That's not where I want to go. Like, if you take these, I'm going for fire. Hey, lots of fire spells. Heights. Hey, you start putting things on ledges and stuff. Oh yeah, that character's going to be disadvantaged at spiders. Put in spiders everywhere, spider webs, cobwebs, everything to freak it out. Like dogs, well, most human settlements have dogs all over, right? Undeads, lots of undeads. Water, hey, you basically gonna be disadvantaged whenever you have to travel and, and things like that. With mentally ill things, it's gonna be sort of like have to behave similarly to phobias, I guess. Uh, so whenever he sees dogs, it triggers it so he thinks everyone is undead and then he wants to attack them or something like that. Um, so that's going to be a lot more difficult to make, I think. Um, because... 
because it's gonna be f it could be fun though if we could come up with a easy way to do it like if we can scared of the dark yeah darkness that was a good one um but how do we get that going right um ba -ba 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 uh, let's see. So, if you are schizophrenic, right? That's a role playing trait instead. If not, I would be forcing role playing on a character, right? So, if a player is good he would choose to make a schizophrenic one and he would play it and he would get no bonus negative except storytelling right and that's the perfect way to do it if i try to make rules for it it would be something like oh yeah you see the dog and now you think everyone who aren't known friends to you are undead and you want to kill them that's a little bit insane to do things like that i think um so yeah, I'm not sure how exactly to go around implementing a negative of that kind without being either overpowering or not doing anything real. Um, but something that's definitely worth thinking of, because it could be cool if we can make something that will work. Right? I can, I can definitely see a way to get it in, but oh man might be a lot of work and might constrain the player too much i think um but good idea good idea bargaining harder yeah but how does that help with the role playing right of course if i'm like um uh, you could do, say, mental illness, uh, anti-social. And then, whenever you interact with people, uh, you would have to roll or do something and see if you accidentally bug them or do okay. Um, I guess that could work like you handicap yourself to that kind of way um, I guess that could be done now the fun part here is if you could make a little deck of mental reactions depending on each of the mental illness types and then whenever you interact with someone you flip a card and that's how you interact with them that could be fun and then you shuffle the deck afterwards and then you draw again on the next interaction that could be really fun uh, but that's gonna limit you a lot um, and I'm not sure because then your player is basically gonna be I guess it's more for the setting or the day oh yeah like uh, if you ever played dark sun the half giant every day if they were near people they would uh, roll and see if half of their alignment shifted to that person's main alignment thing uh, i like that idea uh, so if we go with mental illness and instead of it doing specific things, you daily draw a card and that influences the way you can behave that day. Now that might actually work and be fun. Because it's not too much work. But it can definitely have some influences, right? So on this day, hey, everyone is like going to react badly to you. Uh, Already have the darks and never played it? Oh man, that's such a brutal system. I love that. Um, it's hilariously good. Um, 
it's a very dangerous world, which is the reason why you always start at level 3 uh, every time. <laughs> because it's it's deadly. Uh, but it's, it's an insane world. Um, but I like the, the idea of a mole or half giant and stuff. Um, so let's see, mental illness, right? Uh, background. Fire. Um. So technically, this would run over into the feet thing, but let, let's keep it here for now. Um, so mental illness, uh, draw. Daily for manifestation. Boom. Okay, I can work with that. Then we can later on make a little deck with small things like uh, uh, example. Uh, Uh, treat every one with uh, anger, distaste, TC, or things like that. Okay, so we got phobias, we got mental illnesses and stuff. Whew. Oh, we got a lot. Oh my god. The amount of background modifiers is insane. Like the stacks are big, really big. But I like that because this is actually gonna flesh out your character by a lot with only a few cards. Yeah, that that would technically be an autistic under this, I guess. Uh, we'll 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 pick and choose a little bit from schizophrenic, autistic, and savants and stuff like that. Um, just do a more general overall thing. And that can help the person describe themselves uh, because you can have multiple combinations, anyways, right? Um, so yeah, I'm not sure we should deep uh, delve into having different mental illnesses. We'll just do one more overall thing because if you have really debilitating mental illnesses, then you wouldn't be out adventuring because you wouldn't be able to. But if you only have like in a mild way, it sometimes comes to the fore, but most of the times it might lie dormant. Um, like my, uh, myself with my ADHD and depressions and stuff. So um, I'm thinking that's the best way to go. Because if I do someone like very autistic, like they will never function outside in the world. Uh, that's that's impossible. If someone have the autistic traits that sometimes comes out when you're stressed or bad day and stuff like that, that's workable because they they could still have a semi normal life in general, right? So I'm thinking that's probably a better way to do it. Okay, so we got a lot of things done, right? Now, one thing I haven't really settled down on yet is gods. What effects do you get by worshipping, right? So you can worship a god, you can worship the pantheon of gods, you can be agnostic and atheist. Like, what would that confer to your background? Um, so yeah, that I still not really sure exactly what that's gonna influence because it's not really gonna influence much it's ba it's more like oh yeah you've chosen all the background things then you choose one of these which one are you right do 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 i guess that would influence like some of the things you can do like you can only benefit things from this pantheon you can only benefit from things from this god um, you cannot benefit from things from gods at all, or or things like that. Um, 
I guess that might be the way to go with this. Um, it's more of a uh, helping define your character in a world where the gods are real. <laughs> those last two is going to be interesting. Um, to God based magic. Hmm. Yeah, that could work. Could definitely work. Um, I like the uh, like um, this world where all the I think it's the atheists or something that uh, that live uh, under copper roofs because the gods keep sending lightning bolts down towards them and stuff. Oh man, that's so hilarious! Um, so yeah. So we'll see here. Um, can only items from divine items. I'm from there. God. Uh, where's your pantheon? Can only. Divine items from Pantheon cannot be priest uh, or cannot be cleric. Cleric. Da da. Uh, Ace might have his or her belief shaken successfully affected by God meaning. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they, they could still be saying like, hey, it's just magic. It's not gods. It's not nothing. It's just magic. Magic is basically just science, right? Small Gods was a great book. Yeah. Face number number of I I do like that idea. It was pretty fun. I really need to reread the book. I got... I got myself a Kittle, I got a lot of Discworld books and other things. I find that really good. Um, so let's see here. So Worship Divine can only use items from their god, can only use Divine items from the Pantheon, but cannot be Cleric because you need to uh, worship a specific god to be a Cleric, right? Um, Uh, do, 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 do. Ooh, wait a minute. Well, hmm, I'm not sure I want to have that effect though. I mean, if you believe everything is is basically science, right? Um, then it's not really gonna change whoever casting it calls themselves, right? It's just not been defined yet. Um, because if you've got wizards, right, and you got godlike magic that basically looks like wizardry in a, another way, right, it's easy to just say, hey, it's just a kind of magic we don't really understand that well yet. Um, how about a non-magic believer who doesn't, does believe in magic at all? Basically mentally ill? <laughs> yeah. That is going to be fun, right? No, no, that's not magic. He's just wearing something. Like, strip him and let's see what the contraption is. <laughs> that would be very much in denial. Uh, but I, I can see the, the point in like, yeah, it's just another form of magic, right? But if you don't believe in magic, yes, that's where you cross the line. At least in this kind of universe. Um, but let's see here. So, atheists and agnostic cannot use divine items. Right. Divine items. Use the 
So up his sleeve, yeah, exactly. So what benefits, if they can't use the divine items, what benefits do they get? Uh, so resistances, I guess. Um, gain resistance. Uh, gain the line resistance. Um, yeah, need to find something that can make these two more different as well. Um, but like where we're going for now, right? So where's your pantheon? You can only use the divine items from that pantheon, but you cannot be a cleric. Uh, worship a god can only use items from that god. Divine items from that god, right? Uh, cannot use divine items, but you gain divine resistance. Uh, cannot be cleric or paladin. Cannot be cleric slash then be cleric slash then boom. Um, I'm guessing. So that's the question, right? In my mind, a druid's power is coming from nature, right? So it's, again, it's nature magic. Whereas gods are just divine magic, not god's god's thing. Um, so I'm thinking that's only going to do with belief and not with all the other things. Of course, worshipping Triple X as a god, now that would be interesting. <laughs> Is God maybe some god word who can use certain specific forms of magic? Hmm. That could be an interesting thing. Um, so, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Um, Actually, we need another form of magic as well, right? So... Um, we actually need more beliefs. Right, because... Witches and people with even demons... Um, Worship demons. So that's something in itself, right? Uh, cannot use divine items. Uh, Slash Paladin, but can instead be uh, can be Witch Slash uh, Warlock. I totally forgot about that class. Jeez. So let's quickly make that. I'll read your text in a moment. We forgot making a warlock. Warlock witch one. Woo! -hoo! So let's get you over into the class, class, class. There we go. Um. So let's see here. Uh, I'm not sure they should 
But yeah, I guess I can't be... Cannot be which... Witch slash warlock slash druid, I guess, or not, I don't know. Witch slash warlock, I guess. Wish of life, can't, God can't summon a demon or whatever. And still shoot a file. Yeah, I'm more over into the classes. I'm more defined of what they can. Um, so like the witch and warlock, they they summon demons and stuff like that. Where the god summons angels uh, or godlike things and stuff. Um, so there's not gonna be the option for clerics to summon demons or demon spawns and stuff. That's gonna be in the packs with the witches and, and warlocks and stuff. Um, so now we got these worship demons uh, or demon pact. So this is gonna be interesting. So we're gonna have a lot of exclusivity and stuff like that. And we're definitely gonna need to define this more because that can be a lot of fun. I'm thinking like which pantheon, which gods, like, and the, not only like worship a god, and then that god will confer some bonus and negatives, I guess. Um, so it has to be valuable to have these. So atheist, I guess. Um, so we need to find something that defines atheist over agnostic and something that makes agnostic better at some points than atheist and vice versa. So like one of them might be really good against uh, demons, one might be better against, I don't know, can I do that? Like agnostic don't believe in anything. If I remember correctly, right, that's the definition. Uh, and then atheist strongly believes God does not exist. Um, well, I have to look at that some other point, I guess. Um, we've got that back in. So, we've got economics, titles, afflictions, negatives, loss of that, mental illness, physical illnesses, general illnesses. We need to figure out names and stuff as well. Um, got all sorts of tragic backgrounds and stuff like that so we got professions we need to look at and we got all these things so oh my god that's so many <laughs> damn let's see here that's that's a big stack of cards So this is the stack just for background modifiers, right? And then we got the backgrounds in general, and then we got that. So that's going to be a lot of card to choose from. But this is what defines you, right? So it's okay to have many choices. And lots of them are like number one, two, three, and four. So in general, you can just look at a few parts. Like, do I want to go into the economic deck or the other decks? So by switching them out for that, that's going to be easier to sort through, I guess. Um, got the worship. Got the families. So yeah, that's that's a big pile. Gnostics learn all magic better. Might work, yeah. Might work. Or actually, agnostic might just learn normal skills better. Get a bonus to skills. Because they are not... Yeah. I actually like that. Um... So where do I put it? 
put it oh yeah in the back so let's see here gnostic uh, earns more skills so he just earns more skills because he's not distracted by all the other things. He doesn't go to church, he doesn't go to anything, doesn't spend time disproving things and all sorts of things. I like that. So he earns more skills. And then the other one gains some... Uh, um, resistance we need to figure out something for it at some point but yeah exactly exactly oh man <laughs> oh, I like this this is going good it's going real good so should we flesh out this or Oh, should I take a break, or should we go on to the next thing? You know what? I've actually been streaming for three and a half hours, which is pretty impressive. So, I think I will take a break, so I don't burn out, uh, and then work on this next. Because this is damn fun. And I can see a whole lot of things to do with this. And then we're going to expand on the entire ownership thing as well. Because yeah, that's going to be a little more inclusive as well. Um, and it's going to bleed over into my trade board game. So yeah, I think I'm going to call it for today. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you for stopping by. It has been a blast, uh, Ghost Giraffe. It has been awesome hanging out with you uh, all the time. Thank you so much for your input. I hope you throw a follow uh, down here so you can see me next time I go live. Uh, I will be putting this up on YouTube later and uh, as well as the following streams as well I will be doing um, as we slowly flesh this out. I promise myself I will focus on this and streaming games instead of trying to finish all my projects at once which means I never get to do anything so I'm definitely gonna work more on this uh, but yeah it has been a blast today I've gotten a lot of work done and I'm really looking forward to fleshing that out some more um, thank you guys for stopping by and hope you uh, have an amazing day take care out there